Hi, I'm Greg Bissonette. Welcome to V Drums Lessons. I'm a big fan of double bass drums. Louis Belson was the first guy I ever knew about that played double bass, and I was told he played on an album in 1946 uh, of Duke Ellington's called Skin Deep, where he was the first recorded drummer to play uh, double bass. The next guy that I was into uh, as a double bass drummer was Ginger Baker with Cream, with Eric Clapton and Jack Bruce. And Ginger used double bass periodically throughout songs, uh, but especially at the ends of songs. But the guy that really turned my head around with double bass was Billy Cobham. And he came out with the Mahavishnu Orchestra and then his own band, the Billy Cobham Band, and just really turned the world of drumming on its ear. He is just an amazing pioneer. And Billy Cobham had an album called Spectrum. And on that album, Spectrum, there was a song called Quadrant Four. Later, in 1984, hey, the album was called 1984, Van Halen had a song called Hot for Teacher. And Alex Van Halen told Modern Drummer Magazine when they asked him, how did you come up with the groove on Hot for Teacher? He said, well, I kind of just ripped off like a Billy Cobham beat. And that's pretty much what he did, but he changed a few things. Billy Cobham used the ghost notes, and for those of you who are beginners, the ghost notes are the softer, the shadow notes. Billy Cobham put the ghost notes on his left hand. Alex Van Halen kept the left hand straight on two and four, but put the ghost extra notes on the bell of the ride cymbal. And in doing so, this is the way he played Hot for Teacher. I'll start slow and I'll get quick. <music> Billy Cobham's way <clears throat> was more like this. I'll start slow and get faster. There was an al also an album around, I, I think it's about 1978, called There and Back with Jeff Beck, where Simon Phillips did a Billy Cobham-ish kind of a groove, but he played in seven. He played one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three. And as he would say in his British country gentleman accent, I just sort of lobbed off the last eighth note on the end there, you know. You know, when you're on your acoustic drum set and you want to go from playing a, a double bass hard rock groove to playing a bebop groove or a, an Afro-Cuban groove or a Motown beat or a funky beat, you've pretty much got to tune up your drums, take the pillow out, put the pillow in, cut the hole out, put a new head on, do a lot of jumping through hoops to get totally different drum sounds. With my TD-20, I can just turn you know, a, a knob here, I can go to my chain of all my favorite uh, sounds and just plus or minus down and get completely different sounds for the styles. And that is so important. It's really important. If you were in the recording studio and you were doing someone's album, they would say in between every song, should we keep the same snare drum or should we put up a, don't you have a piccolo? Let's hear the piccolo on this one. Don't you have something with a lot of ring, tag? Don't you have anything that's doof? Yeah, so we would change snare drums often for every song. And you can change the padding in the drum, but it takes a while. If you're live, you can't do that. Well, you can now. So anyway, just put it on you know, your chain of your favorite grooves, plus or minus, down to your favorite sounds. And we'll use lots of different sounds as we're playing these different grooves. The number one thing that I, I find is kind of funny is that I lead with my left foot. Most double bass drummers that I know <clears throat> lead with their right foot. 
The reason I lead with my left foot is because for years as a kid, I'd play my hi-hat, and I still do, on all, all the eighth notes, one and two and three and four and. And that enables upbeats when you hit the hi-hat. Playing on eighth notes is a, is a good thing. Well, I would just bring my left foot over to the left double pedal or the left bass drum. And put the right bass drum on all the upbeat sixteenths. E, up, e, up, one, e, and up, two, e, and up. You know, about two weeks ago, I took a, a two-hour lesson with my good friend Thomas Lang, who's a neighbor of mine. We got together and played double drums, and we were talking about different things. And I said, Thomas, you got to help me out here. Since I was 10, I've maxed out my speed with like, doo -doo 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 I said, why do you think that is? And he looked over, and he said, man, you're playing with mostly your leg. And I said, I said yeah, I do that for volume. He said, well, you're going to, the bass drum, it's got a big sound, and you're going to be able to get a lot of volume, don't worry, play heel down. And he sat and did all these great exercises heel down, and I'm starting to change over. Now you're seeing me kinda, you know, heel up, heel down, doing a bunch of different stuff, but I'm starting to change over to heel down because I think I can get a lot faster uh, speed out of, out of playing heel down. So anyway, uh, those grooves that I did were a left foot lead, you could play right foot lead, Thomas plays both all the time. He's just ambidextrous that way. But anyway, pick one that works for you. And one of the greatest things you can do is play with a metronome. So uh, on my module here, I'm going to hit this uh, magical button. That's 129. Let's go 140. So whenever you can practice with the metronome, it's great. And I know the obvious thing that everybody loves is that in the middle of the night, two in the morning, you can't sleep, you come down, you put on your headphones, you're not gonna wake anybody up because you just turn off your speaker and with this amazing Roland TD20 kit here, you're just gonna have your headphones on and play along with your favorite songs on your, of your music. Uh, anyway, so that's my little take on some double bass grooves. Next, we'll talk about double bass fills. So thank you very much.